The Beaver Valley in Ontario is a prestigious area for fans of winter sports and activities, with multiple resorts and ski hills competing for tourism dollars. Big names like Blue Mountain and Beaver Valley Ski Club are well known by avid slope shredders. But what about their former competition? Once dubbed the most elaborate ski lodge in the province, the first commercial snowboarding run in Ontario. Chances are you've heard of Blue Mountain Resort, but have you heard about the Talisman? Bruce Pritchard and Alex Graydon purchased over 300 acres of farmland in the Beaver Valley area in the early 1960s with aspirations of opening an elaborate ski lodge. The pair were inspired by similar buildings in Bavaria, Germany. Construction started almost immediately and the grand opening of the Talisman Resort took place in 1963. The cost for a private room with a bathroom was $10 per person per night. At the time of opening, the Talisman was the largest ski resort in Ontario, with one T-bar lift and two chairlifts. The resort itself featured 22 private rooms, two dormitory-style rooms, and a bar slash restaurant. Within a year, the resort was popular enough to begin upgrades. The ski hills ranged in difficulty, which allowed the resort to draw both new and veteran skiers in. Teaching people, especially children, to ski on the easier hills was a vital part of their business. In later years, they added a kids club, which was advertised to local schools and youth community groups. On the other end of the scale, there were also some black diamond runs, which are considered the most difficult so skiers of all skill levels could enjoy the slopes at Talisman. By 1965, Talisman wasn't just a winter resort. After the snow melted and the hills cleared, they switched their focus towards summer activities. A golf course and tennis court were added, and they were able to capitalize on their location, which is a part of UNESCO's Biosphere Reserve, and offered nature-based activities like horseback riding, canoeing, and hiking tours. As the resort expanded their customer base, they also expanded physically. The addition of a dedicated lodging building with 42 guest rooms, dubbed the Mountainside Lodge, came in 1968. As snowboarding became more popular, Talisman adapted to meet the demand, and in the 1980s, Talisman installed a snowboarding park, including a snow halfpipe and snowboard-dedicated runs. Talisman was the first Ontario ski resort to openly welcome and cater to snowboarders, making it a prime destination for snowboard enthusiasts throughout the 80s and 90s. The resort held international snowboarding competitions, making it world-renowned at the time. They also added a 50-acre tube park in later years. The main chalet was mostly converted into communal spaces including a casual dining option, a fine dining option, and a poolside bar. They added amenities like a spa, a gym, and a hot tub. They also offered 14,000 square feet of corporate meeting space. The resort was purchased by Jake Hammer in 1983, and he managed it until 2006 when he sold it to an Ontario numbered company run by William Minnis. By this time, the business was starting to go downhill, pun not intended. The highly successful resort had employed approximately 300 workers at its peak, but by the early 2000s, competition from neighboring resorts began to take its toll on the talisman, and budget cuts meant the payroll dropped to just over 100 employees. Reviews of the resort in its later years show a perceived lack of financial investment, the main communal spaces felt dated, the guest rooms were dingy, and the lift equipment began to show its age. The resort continued to run until its sudden and mysterious closure mid-season in 2011, blaming the warmer weather and claiming they couldn't produce enough snow to rebound in time, despite other local hills not having the same issues. Talisman closed its doors partway through the 2011 winter season, only to never reopen. It's unclear what actually happened in those next few weeks after the doors were locked, but over time it became clear that the staff were all terminated, allegedly without their final paychecks. 
and William Minnis had effectively walked away and abandoned the resort in its entirety. Bills weren't being paid, property taxes went uncollected, and eventually the 200-acre property went into receivership by Gray County after over $2.3 million in unpaid expenses. The site would sit vacant for two years like it was frozen in time. Minnis eventually declared his company bankrupt, preventing any chance of repayment. Talisman remained relatively untouched until March of 2013, when Gray County began auctioning off parts of the resort. The Tube Park lot and its accompanying 50 acres of land were severed from the Talisman property and put up for auction. It sold for $211,000. The 104 acres at the top of the ski hill, dubbed Old Smoky, sold for $200,000. Ski lift chairs, snow clearing machinery, golf carts, and more were sold over the course of one weekend. The resort itself was put up for auction, but received zero bids. A second auction was held in August of 2013, once again attracting no interested parties. This is when I made my first visit to the resort. Only a few days after my initial visit, a group of males set fire to the pub, causing Grey Highlands Fire Department to attend the scene and extinguish the flames. Only minimal damage occurred and there's no mention if charges were ever laid. After some negotiations in 2014, Brian Ellis purchased the resort under his numbered company, 2420124 Ontario Limited for $1.8 million. He proposed retiring the ski hills, restoring the buildings, and building a new golf course. Private security was hired for the site to deter trespassers, and work began on the main chalet building. The entire building was stripped to the studs and fresh drywall was installed. Big plans were presented to town council, including $30 million in improvements, adding 60-plus new guest rooms, two restaurants, a Nordic spa, and a 12-acre vineyard with the possibility of a craft brewery. An anonymous partnership with an unnamed major hotel chain was supposed to provide the funds. But then, attention inexplicably shifted to the new golf course. A new clubhouse was built and the first nine holes set up. A website was created and passes could be purchased in advance. The Talisman Golf Course was functional for only three seasons, 2016, 2017, and 2018 before being shut down. Once again, the Talisman Resort sits empty, but now it's a bare bones structure. I made my third visit in 2020 and was saddened to see it sitting abandoned again. The lawn is mowed, and the buildings have power running to them, but that seemed to be the only tangible improvement. The interior has been stripped of any character and left in this bare-bones state for years on end, with those big improvement plans being abandoned entirely. The former 200-acre resort has now been severed into three separate lots, Upper Talisman, Lower Talisman, and Talisman Resort. Upper and Lower Talisman are owned by the county, while the Talisman Resort property is still owned by that Ontario numbered company, and is once again in arrears owing $450,000 in taxes. In 2021, Town Council began accepting proposals for the site, hiring consultants to attract investors. The balance between environment, history, and new development seems to be the biggest hurdle with one proposal wanting to build condos on the site, another proposing a health and wellness resort, and yet another requesting it become a conservation park. One thing has been decided though. The skiing aspect of Talisman, once its claim to international fame, is gone. <laughs>